What would be the units for Q? Remember that Q represents the, uh, the energy that's transferred between things at different temperatures. Would it also be joules? Would also be joules because it's an energy transfer. Anything that's energy, this energy unit would be joules. It really has to be joules because it's in the same equation with delta U. If delta U is in joules, this equation is implying that Q is in joules. Now, when we add heat to the gas, do you think that represents a positive Q or a negative Q? Positive. The convention is that would be positive. I think that's kind of common sense, that when you're adding heat, that gives you a positive Q. And how about when you remove heat from the gas? Right. In fact, I think we already were using these conventions last time when we used the Q equals MCAT formula. And we saw that if you're adding heat, you put in a pot, you would have a positive Q. And when you're removing heat, you would have a negative Q. That was actually especially important when we were doing vaporization or condensation or whatever. And we had to figure out whether Q should be positive or negative. So remember in our example here, the gas was at 30 degrees Celsius and outside was at 60 degrees Celsius. So would Q here be positive or negative for the gas? because heat is coming in. And notice that if Q is positive, would that tend to make delta U positive or negative? Positive. If we have a positive number on the right-hand side of the equation, that tends to give us a positive number on the left-hand side. And would that tend to indicate that the temperature is going up or down? Which is just in accord with our common sense. We would expect that the temperature would be going up here when we're in contact with something that's hotter. On the other hand, if we were removing heat, if we were removing heat, then this Q would be negative which would tend to make delta U negative, which would tend to indicate that the temperature is going down. So again, this part of the fundamental law of thermodynamics is kind of common sense. If you add heat, that raises the energy, which raises the temperature. And if you remove heat, that removes energy, which lowers the temperature. Now, what do you think the W stands for here? Work. work. And we can either do work on the gas or have work done by the gas. Now, do you remember the basic definition of work in terms of force? If we know the force, how do we find the work? Remember, the work is force times distance. Remember, you only have work done when you're moving something over a distance. Work only occurs when a force is being exerted over a distance. Well, what is the thing that can move here? Well, the thing that can move is the piston. So the only way that work can be done here is if the piston is moving up or down. The only way that work can be done here is if this piston is moving up or down so that we can have a force over a distance. Suppose that we push the piston down. If we push the piston down, what, what do you think? Does that represent the gas doing work, or does that represent us doing work on the gas? Us doing work on the gas. OK, that's good intuition. In order to compress the gas, work has to be done on the gas. In order to compress the gas, work has to be done on the gas. Because gases don't normally like to be compressed. Gases like to spread out and get as much elbow room as possible. So only by us doing work. And we'd have to push down on this piston in order to compress the gas. On the other hand, suppose that the gas expands. Well, would that be because we're doing work on the gas or because work is being done by the gas? Now, it's the gas molecules that must be pushing the piston up. We know that the gas molecules sometimes collide with the piston. Well, the gas molecules could be colliding with the piston and pushing it up. And that's what's causing the gas to expand over here. So when we compress the gas, work is being done on the gas. Whereas when the gas expands, work is being done by the gas. And I think it's a very useful habit in this class never to just write down W when we're working in this context. We should always say either the work done on the gas or the work done by the gas. A lot of the time in the textbook, they'll just say, oh, we're going to define W as the work done by the gas, say. 
and then they, they'll, they'll just write W, but it's better to just keep writing the subscript to remind yourself if it's the work done on or the work done by the gas. Now, there's some confusing mathematical issues here. Well, actually, before we get to that, let's say that we compress the gas. If we compress the gas, remember that was when we were going like this. Does that seem like we're adding energy to the gas or removing energy from the gas if we're doing work on the gas? Adding energy. Seems like we're adding energy. So does it seem like delta U should be positive or negative? Positive. Yeah. Well, what that tells us is work that's done on the gas should be added to this equation. Work that's done on the gas should be added because it has a positive relationship on delta U. When you do work on the gas, you want that to increase delta U. On the other hand, suppose that work is being done by the gas. If the gas is doing work, do you think it's going to be gaining energy or using up its energy? That's right, because it needs the energy to do the work. Just like if I do work, I use up my energy. If the gas does work, it uses up its internal energy. It uses up its internal energy to get the wherewithal to do the work. So in this case, when the gas is expanding, it's using up its internal energy. Well, what does that tell you about delta U? Positive or negative? Negative. Well, that means that the work that's done by the gas should be subtracted if you want to find delta U. Work that's done by the gas is subtracting from the internal energy. So a second ago, when I just had a W here, I had a plus or a minus symbol. Because until you say whether this is work done on or by the gas, you don't know whether it should be added or subtracted. But now that we're going to follow our recommendation of always saying W on or W by, that will tell us whether we should be adding the work or subtracting the work. When work is done on the gas, that adds energy to it. But when work is done by the gas, it's using up its energy. So that will give us a negative sign. Now we need to deal with a kind of pesky mathematical issue. Suppose that five joules of work are done on the gas. If five joules of work are done on the gas, what would W on be? Yeah, maybe that was that. That problem was so simple, it seemed like a trick question. But now the, the key here is it would be positive five. Five joules of work are being done on it. Now suppose that somebody asks you how much work is being done by the gas here. So let's think about that together. Suppose that you know that five joules of work was done on the gas. And then somebody asks how much work was done by the gas. Well, there's two ways to answer this. There's the common sense answer and there's the mathematician's answer. So what would a, an ordinary person say here? Well, an ordinary person would say, well, wait a second, you weren't listening. I said the work was being done on the gas. There isn't any work being done by the gas. So an ordinary person would say, well, there isn't any work done by the gas. It's only the work that's done on the gas. But that's not what a mathematician would say. A mathematician would say that the work that's done by the gas here is negative five joules. That's the way mathematicians think. Mathematicians don't like to say that something just doesn't exist. They would say, well, yeah, I agree that technically no work is being done by the gas, but I can show this mathematically by saying that the work that's done by the gas is negative. What does it mean when I say that the work done by the gas is negative? That's just a fancy way of saying that work is being done on the gas. So a mathematician, to a mathematician, these two mean the same thing. Uh, and we have to get comfortable with that because that's the convention we're going to be using here. So even when work is done on the gas, you can still write what the work done by the gas is. You just have to use a negative sign. And, and so, as you might have guessed, which approach is going to be better for our physics here, the ordinary approach, common sense approach, or the mathematician's approach? Well, the physicists follow the mathematician's approach. So the physicists here would say, well, yeah, work is being done by the gas, it's just negative work. So they could plug into the equation here. And that would allow them to use either of these equations to figure out delta u. 
So let's figure out, uh, so let's say that here Q is zero. Let's say that Q is zero. Let's figure out delta U. We can do that together. That's right, and let's see why. Let's start by using this equation. This seems like the most logical equation since work is being done on the gas. Well, I would plug in zero for Q, and what should we plug in for the work done on the gas? Positive five joules. And then we get that delta U is positive five joules. Well, that's what we would expect. We're adding five joules of energy. 